What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking apart a smog pump for a Land Cruiser, uh, specifically the FJ40. Um, currently experiencing a huge, huge storm in SoCal, so I'm not able to go outside and work on the Land Cruiser. Uh, you can see it right there, it's got the cover on, and I'll put some pictures right here of the current situation of my front door and the side uh, walkway uh, full of water, and I've been using a little electric pump to get all that pumped out to the street. So now that the weather kind of relaxed a little bit at least, we're going to take this time to split apart this pump. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is actually re-greasing the bearings in it. Um, the pump itself is very, very lightly used. They took it off this Land Cruiser maybe, I don't know, um, like one or two years in when it was new. Uh, they are known for seizing. When the bearings go bad, they will physically seize and stop spinning. And that's when you'll want to rebuild it. Uh, but since it has such low usage on it, I don't want to change the bearings out. My plan is to actually clean the bearings of all the old grease and just apply new grease. Uh, but if you're rebuilding your pump, it's essentially the same process. And I'll drop a link in the description for the replacement bearings if you want to do it yourself. You can definitely change them while it's apart. So there are two different versions of this pump. And there's uh, the early version, which is going to have that single nut. And the later version, which has the three, uh, I believe like 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, now this nut right here on the older version is going to be um, reverse thread. And from what I read online, they went to the uh, three bolt because people were trying to disassemble these and they were stripping out the shaft, uh, rendering it essentially useless. Um, instead of being able to rebuild it, now you've got a strip shaft and you can't really do anything with it. Um, I'm not going to go that far deep. You only really have to remove that when you're changing out the uh, main bearing that's pressed into the aluminum housing, which um, again, like I stated, I'm not rebuilding this. I'm just re-greasing it. Uh, but that step can be found in another link uh, for a YouTube video that I'll put in the description. They go over it very well. Uh, the unit itself is essentially used in quite a few different applications. Uh, but if the casting looks like this with the uh, four main bolts, then you're essentially going to be doing the same disassembly. Now, why do I have two pumps here? One rookie mistake. I took my pump apart, which is the one that only has a couple of years of use on it. And um, I'll show you how to do it. But while I was doing it, I went too far in deep with the chisel and I literally broke this piece right here. So this piece rides on here. And it's, um, there's a little step that it rides on and it bolts to this. So it's going to be spinning all the time. Now that really, really stopped me in my tracks on my little re-greasing adventure. And I was very fortunate enough to get a pump donated to me by a member on I Hate Mud. Um, it's a Land Cruiser forum online and it's a very tight knit community. And so again, I've already told them plenty of times, but I really, really appreciate the fact that they sent me one of these out. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is splitting this open so we can grab this piece and then we'll re-grease that. And I will hang on to this for parts in the future because like I said, these pumps seize. Uh, they're spinning all the time, pumping air into the motor and there's really no way to re-grease them or re-service them unless you physically take it apart. And if you don't, eventually you're going to get uh, a bearing that gets caught up or a needle that flies out of the bearing and it's not good. So um, the last piece to show you here real quick. So this would go here and this is the rear needle bearing bolts on. There's some bolts that it lines up on, but that bearing is replaceable and uh, I've already wiped the grease off here. But if you look right here, this is the old grease. And it's very, very dry and caked up. So we're going to be using Redline CV2 uh, Molly Fortified Grease and basically just repacking it all. And then um, I'm going to show you how to split open your smog pump because it's pretty easy. But don't do what I did and go in deep because you will break this and you'll get stuck. So we're just going to try to split it on the very outermost edges. And... Um, I guess I could also go over the fact that this piece is part of the housing and let me get a light here. That shaft goes through the, uh, the, I don't know what you would call it, the vine, the veins. 
So this piece is going to line up with this piece. So this one's going to have, let's see here, there we go. So they line up and that shaft goes all the way through. Well, first things first is removing these. And I got it in the vise, it makes it much, much easier to tap this out. You can see this Dell and this Dell, and we're going to be taking this piece out of the veins on the inside. Okay, now that I'm happy that we got the dowels popped up just enough, I'm going to pull this out. And we can see right where everything is originally. So I kind of showed you mine where it was all taken apart. But look at this grease. This grease is very, very old and very, very dry. It's not doing much in the form of lubricating and preventing any seize, uh, seizing components. And right here you can see how, let's see here. Well, it doesn't have the shaft to keep everything in line, but these scrub the air and pump out of the ports that come out of here and here. Um, and these are just going to be little Allen screws. So um, let's pop this off and see if that ring is the one to one, which it looks like of the one I chipped. And then hopefully we can get that one uh, reassembled. All right, this is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we've got a direct replacement that I can use to put mine together. And I will keep this for spare parts in the future. Um, again, look at that dried up grease. It's very, very bad. There's not too much play on this. Let me see here. This is the NTN bearing, so it still looks like it's factory. If not, it's been replaced with a really good unit. This is NTN as well. And I cleaned up the grease on this one, uh, but there's no slack in the bearing. At least not on this one because it was such low uh, hours on it. This one, it's got a little bit of play, but uh, nothing to be concerned about. And then uh, one more thing to note is there is no gasket between the two halves. You could kind of see some of the rust where water was getting in. Um, that's just by design. All I'm going to do is clean it up really good so that it has a tightest seal as possible. And then um, I'll show you guys what we got to do to take these out to clean and regrease. This one I won't disassemble any further. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of that, um, I'm going to be taking these veins out and also I already took a photo of how everything went together. Uh, hopefully I could slide them out and they just snap and hold each other in. That's my plan, but we'll see. Let's do this so you can see it. They have to come out together because one slides into the other. Just like that. So we're going to leave this right here. And yes, these stayed in so we don't have to mess with that. There's no play in the bearing, so I'm not going to be changing the bearing. But we'll get some of this out.
So I don't want to mix these up. I'm just going to leave it like that and we will clean up all the grease. Yeah, look at that grease. That's just old and dry. Let's see how this feels on here. Oh yeah, there's no play, no slack. So this is what it rides on normally. So we're just going to deep clean it. Make sure we don't knock a needle out. And then we'll lightly dab in some grease. Okay, so we have everything clean. Um, basically, I use the file to just take down any of the sharp edges from when I use the chisel to get into this deal um, on both sides. And we cleaned it up really good with this, um, I don't know, it's like a plastic brush or whatever. It's not too abrasive. And then wherever that couldn't get, I used a uh, piece of scotch Bright. Now I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol to clean the base. Actually, we'll wait on that. We'll get the veins in um, after we put some grease on. So I chose Redline CV2. It is a Molly fortified grease. When you take it apart, you have some of that black grease on there. That's kind of like Molly fortified, similar to what you'll find in uh, the Burfield Knuckles if you've rebuilt that on your Line Cruiser. Um, so this meets or exceeds that for this seal that rides on here, which is the one that I took out of the other pump. And then uh, it's also good enough for bearings as well. So I pretty much use it on everything. We're going to put it on some of these guys right here. And then we'll get them dropped back in. And then um, we'll just put a little skim coat around here on the shaft. And uh, alcohol on the outer rim right here. Outer piece right here. And we'll get everything set on. Okay, so we've got all of these tightened down and uh, one of the most important things you need to do is make sure that these blades right here are flat. They can't protrude outside of this little housing at all or you will break this little disc. So I learned the hard way. I broke this one and I was able to get parts off of another pump that wasn't working from a forum member on I Hate Mud and um, it totally saved me so learn from my mistakes make sure that these are uh, completely flat before you tighten this down that way you don't have any issues so now all we have to do is just snake this through the rotor uh, bearings that we already pre-greased and kind of move everything around a little bit until it sits onto the dowel so this dowel is going to go in here this dowel is going to go in here and then uh, we'll be able to bolt it up Just be gentle, no need to rush. You just kind of want to move this pulley until everything kind of just sits. If you force anything, you will break it. So do not force anything. So this is pretty much at this height telling me that I've got this shaft through all four of the bearings on the uh, carbon veins. And now I should be able to safely tap it down onto the dowels. So while I do that, I'm going to obviously make sure it's still free.
All right, that is a secondary air pump all put back together. This is all put back together and we've got perfect movement all the way around. Again, do not rush this. You don't want to break anything. Um, I learned the hard way and it's just something you need to take your time on. Originally, there wasn't even anything wrong with this. I just took it apart because I wanted to add grease to it. Uh, the factory grease was just shot. I mean, it's super old. Probably not as good as modern grease, so I re-greased the bearings. I know this pump has low hours. So if you've got a pump that's seized up, it'll be something like this. I mean, this thing is not even moving. It's really, really hard. Um, I've already taken off the rear bearing and the uh, housing so the only thing that's left are going to be the bearings in these veins which aren't going to prevent it from spinning so that means that it's the bearing behind this pulley where you would just have to take this nut off take the pulley off and there's a snap ring and you can press it in and out um, again I'll leave a link for a video in the description below and they go over how to rebuild one of these pretty thoroughly so that'll help you out um, aside from that, we're going to keep going on this project and get all this smock stuff put on the Land Cruiser.